Oh, welcome. Welcome everyone to tonight's webinar. This is Investing Safely in Paradise, your legal ascensions essentials for foreign real estate transactions here in the Dominican Republic. So we are delighted to have everyone here from all over the world. And today, you know, our big goal today is to make you all have a very, very good understanding of the legal processes involved in a real estate transaction here. And we want you to know that you can be safe. So without further ado, who am I? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Michelle Bordeaux. I'm an associate with Realtor DR, and I'm originally from Canada. I moved here in 1999, so I've been here for 25 years. I learned to windsurf, and then I chose to stay. In 2003, I purchased my first home here. So I'm not just a realtor, but I'm, I'm also a homeowner. Um, I came here as a massage therapist, and I opened and ran a successful massage practice before opening in Dari Spa. So I also own a spa in addition to real estate, and that spa has successfully been running for 14 years now. Uh, I, I have bought and sold property, so I didn't just buy. I have sold and repurchased, and I bought my current home that I'm in. And I'm also the organizer of an amazing event called the Butterfly Effect. So hang on one second. I think I have not shared my screen with you all. So let me go pop back in quick to Zoom here and make sure that I'm sharing that screen. There we go. All right. That's going to be a lot better for everyone. You'll be able to see that now. Here we are. Okay. <laughs> Technical difficulties sorted. All We're right. Alive. There we go. That's right. We are. And it's all okay. So make that bigger for everybody. Perfect. There we are. All right. So in 2021, I joined Realtor DR and here we are tonight. And I am so delighted to introduce our amazing guest speaker tonight. This is Annabelle Rizek from the Guzman Ariza Law, law Office here. They are the largest law office here in the country. They have offices all over yes. the Dominican Republic. Uh, Annabelle was born and raised right here on the North Coast in Sisua. Uh, again, she is a, a judicial translator in Spanish and English. Yeah, she's got 12 years of experience. She's got numerous real estate transactions for national and international clients. She provides legal advice to tourist projects in the Cabarete and Sisua area. And she represents uh, you know, several condominiums and annual general meetings. And she's experienced in structuring and incorporating Dominican LLCs for international investors. And she is a lawyer that I have worked with many times, and I know that she is able to help counsel not only us as realtors, but you as clients to making a safe and legal transaction. Thank you so much, Michelle, for having me here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. So we like to do a little sorting hat here when we start a webinar and make sure that you're in the right place at the right time. So this webinar is for you if you dream of owning a vacation home in a tropical paradise, but you want to ensure that your investment is legally secure and protected. And I know that you've probably heard mixed stories about buying property in the DR and you want to learn how to confidently navigate the process with expert guidance right here. So uh, this webinar is also for you. If you don't know about an, enough about the modernized DR legal property system, and you've got natural anxiety about making a large investment in a foreign country, it's an absolute normal thing. So, and this webinar is also for you. If you have been researching beach properties in Cabarete and Sisua, and you want to understand the steps involved in a successful purchase from offer to close. All right. So let's get into it. First of all, you want to start off by choosing a knowledgeable realtor to guide you. This is our incredible team over at Realtor DR, where we strive every day to be better than the day before. We want to make sure that we are as knowledgeable as we possibly can so that you, our clients, have a safe and easy time getting into the property that you want in the shortest time possible. So that being said, shall we jump in? Sure. I know. Yeah, let's we, do this. We have so much amazing things that we want to talk with you about tonight. So let's start off by why we should invest in the Dominican Republic. So we're going to start off. We have a beautiful, serene, tropical destination, I'm and it's warm year round. I love it, it that it's summer here all year <laughs> round. I have friends everywhere, and they're like, oh, which is the best time to visit? I'm like, anytime. 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 You can come, it's always exactly. good. <laughs> and and, and you can, as you can see by, by Annabelle and I, we have a wonderful mix of Dominican and immigrants that live here and Spanish and English is are widely interchanged. Yes, we're really rich culturally. Yeah. Because we have people from everywhere. Yes. 
Exactly. Uh, we have a growing tourism industry and an amazing investment opportunity. So Annabelle, I know that you've seen both with the number of construction, you know, projects that are happening, but the North Coast it's, is booming. Oh my it? God. It's so exciting for me. Yeah. I'm like, every time <laughs> I'm going to Cabarete, I'm looking at the roads. I'm like, oh my God, new things, new things. It's really exciting for me. Yes. For us who work here every, yes. Because most people, um, are more towards other other towns in the Dominican Republic. I'm like, no, come here. Like, this is the place. <laughs> yeah, the North Coast is really, really thriving right now. And this is the time to get in. Yes, guys. Uh, we also have affordable price points compared to many other Caribbean uh, locations. So, you know, there, there are islands such as, the, you know, the Bahamas and Barbados and Bermuda, things like that, where to get into an oceanfront property is going to cost you significantly more money than it costs you here. So your dollar goes a lot farther here in the Dominican Republic. And we have a stable political and economic environment, yes. don't we? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the current government, uh, well, all of the governments, but the Dominican Republic is one of the fastest growing economies in Latin America. Tourism is on track to break more records this year again. And we have, you know, there's some wonderful things like there's no restrictions on foreign property ownership. So if that all sounds great to you. About af the affordable prices. Yes. Um, I don't know if you do the same that I do. Like every yeah. time I'm traveling, I'm always looking at real estate just to kind of see. Compare. Yes. yes. And like Puerto Rico is much more expensive. Turks and Caicos is much more, expensive. much more expensive. And even Cuba, I've heard. I haven't been there, but I've heard people like, no, it's super expensive to invest there. Yes. So yes, this is your place. This is your place. Absolutely. But I'm guessing, as you can tell by the slide, that you might have fears and or questions. Of course, that's what we're here for. That's exactly right. So we're going to start off with probably the top number one fear that people have coming to a foreign country is title security. So you might be afraid that you're going to be purchasing a property. The title's not valid. You're going to worry that it's too good to be true. You're going to have, you're going to be stressed out that you're going to lose all of your money. Maybe it's all of your retirement funds. This is a valid, valid fear. And we are going to get into all the reasons why you don't need to worry when you're working with a knowledgeable realtor and an expert lawyer. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we have a legal system to navigate. You could be concerned that you don't know what the law is here and that you might, you know, miss something that's critical or important to your transaction. And that this is a Spanish speaking country. As you can see, it's possible for you to have a realtor in English and a lawyer in Espanol. <laughs> Or in English también, <laughs> both of them, because yo hablo español, I hablo like English. English. Exactly. <laughs> so we can take care of you no matter what language. And inside the Realtor DR office, just so you know, we have, I think, five or six different languages that we can take care of you in. So if you're worried, please come and let's have a conversation. Uh, and the last probably biggest fear is the construction and development reliability. For those of you who are jumping into maybe a pre-construction project, you could be worried that, you know, the building uh, standards aren't the same as they are back home and they're not, um, but that they're, they're not going to produce a building that's going to be livable or you're going to lose your money, things like that. Uh, and also that a, you know, a, a construction project is actually valid and real yes, because is it has happened in the past where, you know, people have lost their money. So we are here to make sure that that never, ever happens to you. Yes. With title security, Michelle, I really like working with you guys and I can attest to this. Um, before you bring a client in, you have already spoken to one of the attorneys at the firm. Yes. So if there's something weird, you'll be like, what do you think about this before the offer comes? Because when you come to me and, oh, oh hi, Michelle. So do you have a title? Okay, yes, you have a title. Okay, but can I transfer this title? It's not just having the title, guys. It's can I actually make this happen and get it in my favor at the end? Is there a lien on the property? That's the biggest thing on title security and due diligence. That's why you need it to your attorney. So my work is going to be, let me find out if there's a lien on the property. There are different types of liens. Can I work within this lien? Can I make the closing happen and kind of cancel that lien at some moment? Absolutely. Can this actually go through? Or if I'm going to need a little more time, can we structure it in a way that there's a promise of sale signed first and then the closing, the second closing takes place at another time? But make sure that we are able to satisfy the client and what he needs, but also within... Um, 
how can I say this? Like make it work in a way that I'm can I can actually yeah. guarantee that you're going to get this title at yeah. the end. Yeah. I have the, to explain what the process is going to be, but finding ways around it. Yeah. And so this is why this is why you need to work with a with a, a really, really top-notch team who knows what they're doing and who uh, has your best interest at heart every step of the way a transaction. Because it's not just having a title, is can I transfer this title? Is this title clean? Are the taxes paid? Um, some people come, people come to me and they have a title. It's not in their name because they're doing an estate process or because um I don't know, they're going, it's pre-construction, so they still don't have the title. Can you make this work? Work? Yes, but how you need an attorney for that. Don't Absolutely. give up all the money on front. Give withhold something for the end so that you're able to have some leverage yeah. to make this work. Yeah. So let's talk about some common pitfalls that that can be fall that, that people can jump into. So we talked about the, the title ownership disputes. So it's crucial to have a clear title. And that's where your realtor and your lawyer come in. Yes. Uh language barriers. So if you feel that the language is 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 a pitfall for you, again. What happens here is that all of the legal contracts happen in Spanish, but that normally if you are a native English speaker, there's going to be an English contract identical right beside it that you will also sign, but it will be the Spanish one that will be legal, but you will also have your contract in English so that you can understand it. Just ask for your attorney for it. Say, yeah. I want one in English. If not, I want one in French and Italian. We'll make it work. Yeah. Make sure that you know what you're signing. Exactly. It's also a liability for us. So I want to make sure that you understand what you're signing, that you can make your questions, that you can make an educated decision at the end. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's, it goes both ways. Absolutely. Um, I've seen people uh, who come to me and say, oh, but Michelle, I'm going to go consult my lawyer in, in Toronto about this real estate deal. And oh Annabelle, I know that you can attest <laughs> that, that, you know, as, as we love the legal profession, however, law is specific to a country. Exactly. All yeah. of us here are different. Plus in Canada, in the US, you have a different type of law, which is common law in the US. In Canada, I'm not sure, but it's different. So our law is based on French law. So some countries who have the same kind of law understand, but when it comes to U.S. and Canada, I have to kind of explain what's going on. And that also, that's a lot of fears because of that. Yeah. But I'm always like, okay, put me in contact with your attorney so I can help them understand and help them explain to you what has to be done and why this is different. Yep. So a great lawyer here. If you need your lawyer from back home involved for your own, you know, for your that's own fine. reasons... Just ask your lawyer yeah, here you to, to communicate with them. Right? You can't think that it's going to happen in the same time no. frame or under the same structure as some other country. No. You have to understand that this yeah. is what is going to apply here. Yeah. But talking to your lawyer back home, I have no problem. Exactly. And your CPA back home, yeah. your estate planning person, all that. Yeah. Uh, so another common pit pitfall is scams and fraudulent schemes. It still happens folks. It, it does. We, we do everything in our power to make sure it doesn't, but usually we're the ones who are coming in after the fact to try to fix it. Exactly. So again, it comes to, and, and even going into the next pitfall, which is going it alone. The yeah. scams usually happen to people who don't have a realtor and don't have a lawyer. Get your, it's more expensive for you to try to fix a problem than to prevent it. Yeah. So yeah. get your realtor, get your attorney, get due diligence done before you mess the money. Absolutely. Cause we don't want you in that pitfall. We do not want to have to pull you out of there. And and sometimes, you know, you, you see a, a listing on Facebook and go, yeah, that looks great. I want that. And you contact, you reach out to the owner directly. And all of a sudden you find yourself down a garden path and you're not sure how you got there. Remember in this country, buyers don't pay the realtor. A seller pays the realtor. And so it's in your best interest as a buyer to come in with someone behind you who understands the system, who knows what to look for and can help make sure that you're looking at properties that are really well suited to you. I remember the case. So this person saw someone on yeah, Facebook yeah. just like this. This like from Dubai or someone. They had never been in the Dominican Republic. Yeah. So first, they have never been here. <laughs> and they, they purchased based on some photos that they saw, not even yeah. videos. So they sent a $50,000 deposit, not to the attorney, to the seller. To the right? seller directly. To the seller directly. Yeah. So when the guy comes... There's like leaking everywhere. There's filtrations. The house was nothing like they looked. You had no idea how difficult it was to get part of the deposit bank because there's no way I could get the 50000 Because he went and signed an offer before even speaking to an attorney, before speaking to a bigger yeah. deal, before getting any information from any third party who could help him in the Dominican Republic. So imagine how that happened. And that's, imagine yes. you lose $25,000. How are you going to invest $500,000 without even seeing the property yes. or someone that you trust haven't seen it? Exactly. Just Facebook. No, 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 we, no. we don't get to, we don't do that. And that's the same as jumping into a pre-construction development again by yourself. Never. It costs you nothing to have a realtor. 
We at Realtor.dr require all developers to come through a stringent process of proof of funds, of permits, of showing us all of the things that they we know that they're going to be able to complete this project. Uh, there are a lot of developers, though, still to this day, who don't want to 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 provide all of that transparency, and we want to make sure that you are protected. So when you work. That should be your alert. When you work with great realtors, they're going to make sure that you're protected because we do some of the legwork for you ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we were talking about this before. Yeah. I think that since this is a small community, it's a good thing. It's an advantage for it us is. because yeah. there's a lot of word of mouth. So someone knows someone who's developing. So you have an idea of who this guy is, where to contact him, what's going on. Does he have other projects? Does he have yeah. other investments? What guarantees can There's he There's no hiding. Yeah, so I think, I think that's one of the good things of yeah. investing in this area. So, so people kind of know each other. Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, so, but don't go, don't go, don't dive into that yourself. Don't. Never, don't. never. So I want to get into some of these key legal considerations. And so Annabelle, I want to talk with you about due diligence. Okay. So I know that everyone I'm sure is wondering, so what happens? I put in an offer on the property. Okay, so... I, my realtor says it's good, but how do we really know? Because I, I, me as a realtor, I'm not going to check the tax certificate. Exactly. I'm going to hand That's it over. So once we have an offer to purchase and it's been signed, I'm then going to pass it on to Annabelle. Yes. And so explain to the folks at home what happens in the due diligence process. So what due, do you look for? Due diligence includes basically two things, which is clean title and taxes paid up to date. Great. So the clean title, I'm going to get a certification from the Registry of Titles Department. I'm going to see that there's no lien on it, no third party rights. It's not object of any type of legal case open. All that. There's yeah. no court cases. There's nothing. It's free. And the tax department, I'm going to find if it's up to date with the payment of its taxes. Great. Because you can do a sale and you won't know until you file it for transfer that there are taxes that are pending. And you know what? If I already saw I'm the seller, goodbye. I have nothing to do with this. Then the buyer has to pay that. Yeah. So the due diligence is making sure that you're good to go. Awesome. All right. And so that means that when you work with a, with a realtor and a lawyer, when you get to the closing moment, you know that you are buying a clean title exactly. that is free and clear to sell with no tax liens on. And for example, if it's in the case of a condo, then you also need like a certification from the administrator that is up to date with the maintenance fees. Um, yeah. You need um, the utility bills, everything paid. Because yeah. that also happens. If there is a payment that's pending and the guy sold, the new buyer, you have to pay that because you owe to the condominium. Yes. So that also happens. So let's make sure that that, that doesn't happen. Everything. Yes. So we make sure that we dot our I's and we cross yep. our T's before you get to the closing table. Yes. Also, yeah. this is something that you guys also take into consideration as well. If you have an employee there and all of a sudden the new buyer, oh, I'm going to keep the employee because she's really good cleaning the house, this and that. Oh, what happens? Because you didn't pay separate rent to that employee. They've been working for the same house. Then that can also be a complication. Yes. That's another thing that we have to take into consideration. Yeah, we make sure that all employees have been properly let go because yes. the, the way they- If you want they... to rehire them, then exactly. that's good for you. But have them finish that and start new fresh with you. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so we talked about, oh, we talked about, hang on, the title searches. Des Linde. So for some of you who have maybe come in here, you you may have heard that that term Des Linde. So what does Des Linde mean and how does it, it protect us? The most popular thing. So, yeah. Um, registration of properties in Dominican Republic, I'm not getting into history, but it's it's fairly new. So there's this mother parcel, let's say parcel number one, and let's say also sue as parcel number one. What does this mean? What you do is you separate your specific lot from that mother parcel and you get a definitive title before you only had a provisional title before yeah. this this. Now you get a definitive title um, and then you're able to transfer that without any problems. Properties that are not this that you can't transfer them now because yes. they have like a note on them that makes yes. them. And what, what year did they change the system? Um, 2007 at the beginning. So just and then 2007. Were, yeah, yeah. And then there were, there, there were being some changes different yeah. years, 2013 and that way. Um, so how that this that happens is you hire a surveyor. The surveyor goes with their GPS system. They see the boundaries of the property. They lock in the boundaries. They submit that to a department that approves it. And then it goes to the registry of titles. The old title is canceled and the new one is yeah. It's just showing the name of it. And now we know that uh, that a title has come through the Des Linde process mm -hmm. if it's a certain color. Yes. Do we not? Yeah. Yes. So it the makes it easy. <laughs> so if you're looking at a title and it's blue, it's... the Des Linde has been done yeah. already. Because sometimes people ask me, oh, um, where's the Des Linde? I'm like, the Des Linde is not a thing. Like, yes. you just see the title and you do the due diligence and you make sure that it's Des Linde. But it's not, yes. you're not going to see it unless that title came from a Des 
this linde, it's not gonna say anywhere like this yes. linde, or there's not yes. gonna be anything specific for you to be able to know exactly. right away. Yes, and we, like I said, we as realtors, when we have someone who's listed as a seller inside of our website, we make sure that they have an updated title already. So we've done that work. But part you. of what we do is we also hire a surveyor, even if it's a distinct property, just to reconfirm the boundaries because things may change, especially with beachfront properties. Ah, because yes. of the tide, when yeah. it was done, yeah, it might have changed. So just to confirm that the areas is, are fine. Because yeah. sometimes people think, find things that somebody put like a wall on a side of your property. So they're taking 10 of your meters. What are we going to do about that? Yes. Just yes. to reconfirm, that's also. Yeah. And that's something that, that you recommend. can ask for as well. If you want the property to be resurveyed before you close. So yeah. these are all things that, that you can look out for, for as yourself, as the client. And we'll also be right next to you the whole set, the whole process, making sure that, that we're taking care of you. And something I also want to point out about the new Deslinde program is that mm -hmm. it's now using modern GPS technology, oh, yes. whereas before it was not. So this country is up to date. Yeah. We are 2024. Years, yes. <laughs> We're 2024 and things are not the yeah, same. Yeah, they're very more today. accurate, more precise. The difference between like one survey and the other can be like one meter, one square meter, but it shouldn't be a big thing if they're all using like pretty new GPS technology yes, yeah. equipment for that. So what we're going to go through some of the documents that you need. It's very, very simple here. Yes. As a buyer, as a foreign buyer, all you need is your passport valid passport. Yes. And you need a second photo ID for most people. That's their driver's license, but that can also be any other type of legal photo ID. Yes. And we need photos of the front and back. So as a buyer, that is all the documentation that you are required to provide in addition, obviously to your funds to purchase a property. Right. So, but some of the other documentation that we as realtors will come and bring to the table from the seller are going to be the title, Yes. Annabelle is going to go and get you your tax clearance certificates. Yes. Uh, sometimes, and this will be a whole nother webinar about uh, titles or properties that are held in a corporation versus held by a person. And that's, that is a whole other kettle of we'll fish. We'll be back for that one. Yes. We've already decided <laughs> that's webinar number two. Um, uh, and, and power of attorney. So you don't have to be here. We can create a power of attorney for you. Um, generally my, myself as a realtor, I am often the power of attorney for people oh, yeah. That's the number we're going and to. power of attorneys are easy to create and they are only valid for that one single transaction. Yes. I don't get power over anything else. Yeah. We don't give our general power no. of attorney for no. anything. No. It's no. just so it's very for that. And we have a translator for you. Yeah. Because people were like, Oh, but I need to leave in the closing to two weeks. I can't travel back. Don't worry. We have the solution for you. <laughs> We've got you. Absolutely. Yes. Um, and, and then we send, oh, I'm yeah, sorry. And then we send, we send all the documents in English that are going to be signed and wait for the authorization for the client. Like, okay, you can go ahead and same for you guys. Like, okay, let me make sure we confirm. Then we do the closing. Nothing is getting signed without the, the client's authorization. Awesome. Awesome. And so we'll talk a little bit about besides all of the things that we just talked about that you do, but some of the roles that, that, that an attorney has in the process. So you, you're going to validate all the documents yes. you're going to create. And so your attorney is going to draw up the contract of sale. So Annabelle yes. will be the one. So it's due diligence, yes. then drawing up the contract. And then at the end, obviously the transfer process, yes. because after you've already signed the contract, then you have to send that to the tax department. Yeah. Um, it's find out how much you have to pay in transfer tax. Yes. We send you the information, then we make the payment. Then we have to file in the um, registry of titles and get your new title. So there's a whole process. It's like before in between and, and after, after closing that has Absolutely. that the attorney has has to kind of be in contact yeah. with you and do some jobs. Now there's something I don't have on this sheet, but actually that I want to bring up, which is escrow services. Oh yes. So oh. oftentimes most of the reputable attorneys here on the North Coast and in this country are going to be able to offer you some escrow services. Yes. So talk a little bit about that. Okay. So escrow services is because you want an intermediary. If you're the seller, you don't want to deliver the title without knowing that the money is there. Exactly. If you're the buyer, you don't want to hand over the, the, the money, money without doing the closing. <laughs> so we're in the middle. You send the funds to our escrow account. And once everything is signed, then we um, make the, the distribution yes. of the payments. We have escrow accounts in the U.S. to make it easier because most of our clients are foreigners as well. And I know you guys appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. Um, most of our clients just send it there. We get it the same day, the next day. It's pretty easy. Once everything has been signed, then we just yeah. need the information from the buyer. I mean, I'm sorry, from the seller, um, the commission that has to be paid, any deductions that have to be done. For example, if you still owe maintenance, uh, we can just deduct that from the from the funds from you the have escrow, and, yeah. and we pay directly. So that's kind of what we do with the escrow, just so both parties are in agreement. Yeah. Also for the deposits for the offers. 
I'm not going to take a property off the market. Well, you, you're not yes. going to take a property off the market if there's without no earnest money. Exactly. No. And then it's like, okay, why am I going to send it to the, to the realtor? If maybe you're representing the seller. Okay. Let me send it to this person who is a third party. That's also where we come in. Yeah. And it's super helpful to have these services available because it does make moving money much easier than trying to bring it into this country yourself. Yes, is that, <laughs> that 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 is a headache that that again, I think that's probably going to be another yes. another another <laughs> webinar. And I think that the fact that it's in the U.S. makes it even Absolutely. easier for, people. It's for super, most it's people. So it's the domestic easier. wire and then from Canada, it's pretty, yes. pretty simple to get that done. They deal with moving the money from the U.S. into this exactly. country, which makes it, again, you don't have so to worry much about easier. that. <laughs> yeah, so much easier. And then the closing procedure. So let's just go through that real quick. So we you go through, you revert, you review all of the purchase agreements and everything, um, and any of the negotiations that have happened. Yes. And you make sure that all the terms of the contract have been fulfilled. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And then she handles the deposit and the payment structure. Then again, the registration of the sale. Exactly. That gets every four. So yeah. so we sign the contract, distribute payments, it goes to the tax department, we inform you, we pay taxes, then we deposit registry of titles, you get your title. Yeah. All right. So moving on here. The Dominican Republic has taken some important steps over the last 10 years to address the issue of unclear land titles and make real estate so much safer and more accessible for foreign investors. All right. So these are the key improvements. Don't, don't glaze over, but these are these things that have happened in the last 10 years are why it is now an incredibly safe and very welcoming place for foreign investment. So the launch of the comprehensive land titling program. Before, prior to 2007, it was a little bit dicey, was it not? Because it you was. didn't have the Dislinde obligation. Yes. yes. So you could say you had a title anywhere. Yeah. And, and sell it. I have a t- I have 300 square meters in parcel one. Okay. We're in parcel that one. Doesn't that anymore. doesn't happen anymore. It does no. not happen anymore. The establishment of a centralized cadastre and registry agency called DICAT. There have been updates to the legal framework and the government real estate system, and there is now increased oversight and enforcement efforts. So these have helped to address the longstanding issues with unclear land titles so that you can feel safe walking into the Dominican Republic and purchasing either your dream home or your next piece of international foreign investment. But not by yourself. Again, not Not by by yourself. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. It's safe, but... Precaution for people. Always, always, always. All right. So here is a very simplified walkthrough of the timeline of a purchase here in the country. So first step, you're going to find a great realtor. Yes. You're going to make sure that your realtors, please make sure that you, you know, whoever you're working with, you've done a little bit of your own homework on them. I was going to say, like, it's pretty easy to verify who this person is. Yes. Social media. Exactly. Word of mouth. Just ask. Yes. Ask some people. Next step is you and your realtor are going to start looking at properties and you're going to find one and that's going to be awesome. And we, then we come to the make an offer stage. So at this point, it's your realtor who's going to be handling the paperwork and going back and forth and you and your realtor and the seller and their realtor will be doing some negotiation. You land on a price. Yay. All right. Great. At this point, it's time to choose a lawyer. And so sometimes your realtor is going to suggest someone. If you don't know who are great realtors, I will say, Annabelle, I've got some great clients here. I would love to introduce you. And you're going to make sure that this lawyer, they have things like an escrow account in the U.S. because that's so helpful. Make it easier for clients. Exactly. And vet your lawyers as well. You know, feel free to take a look at them. Make sure that you're happy with who you're working with. I love it when they come to the office. Exactly. I'm like, come see this office actually exists. Get to know me. Let's see if we can connect on the same level. Yeah. Sure. And decide who it is you feel comfortable working with. Because at Definitely. the end of the day, Annabelle and I both want to make sure that you feel though you're making the best decision for you with all of the information in front of you. Yes, of right? course. Yeah. And that you're able to contact us at any, at any moment. Like, oh, I still have this question that I came up with. What is this? Sure. Always. Contact me. We're there for you. Bring the questions. <laughs> we love the questions. Love the, yeah. Love the feedback. We love yeah. the questions. We love everything. Yeah. So now you've chosen your lawyer. Like we were talking about, Annabelle is going to go through all the due diligence process, make sure that this property is okay for you to buy and for the seller to sell. And then you're going to come to the closing of the sale. All right. So you're going to sign in person or with your POA. Yes. Right. And then the money is going to be moved. And at 
at that point, Annabelle again goes back to work. She's not done yet. Exactly. And, <laughs> and she's going to take care of handling the paying the, the title transfer. Process. Yeah, the conveyance process. Exactly. Yeah. And now generally, just so for people to know, because I'm sure that they've uh Okay, we're gonna we're gonna and we're gonna get to some of these things in the chat in a little bit. Um, that you will get your title within thirty to ninety days. Okay, after the closing. After the closing, so that's a normal amount of time that you should expect between signing of the contract and receiving the title exactly. in your name. But you get the keys to the property on the closing day. Exactly. So yes. not, it's, they're not two separate. I mean, they are two separate things. They're not related. In yes, that case. but you get possession immediately, right away. Right. Yeah. Okay. We do the closing, you get the keys, and then the attorney handles all the administrative process that goes afterwards. So now granted, there's a lot more detail in all of this, but this is generally for those of you who have no experience with any sort of real estate transaction here in the Dominican Republic. That is generally how the, the, the path that you'll take to owning your next new home. All right. All right. Look at that. Annabelle, you're hired. Oh. Be there November 29th. I love that. Awesome. <laughs> well done, Brian. Okay. So now we have come, we presented you with a lot of information and it's time for you to start asking questions. So we are going to be pulling up. We've got a lot of stuff happening in the chat here. I let's see. see. Let's see. All right. And let's see. I want to also pull up if I can into the Q and A. So we've got both things in the Q and A and, but I cannot see my Q and A. So I'm going to team, we're going to get out of our share here. I'm going to stop sharing our screen, getting over here. All right. There's our Q and A. So we'll have both the Q and A and the chat going on here. So let's come back here. All right. Let's start with something. Oh, this chat. is great. Last it question. is great. All right. <laughs> we like so, engagement. Uh, here's a good one from Steve. Okay. How can you check title for a pre-construction deal? Okay, Steve. So titles, pre-construction already have titles as well. So we do the due diligence mm -hmm. is the same as with something that's not built yet. So there's two types of due diligence that you do here. One at the beginning, before you sign the promise of sale contract. And then once again, before you're ready to transfer. Due diligence is the same thing, whether it's pre-construction or not pre-construction. Pre-construction involves two times, just to make sure that when you did the first due diligence, the title is still clear at the end for you to transfer. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've got people asking if the slides are going to be emailed to you. Absolutely. So tomorrow you're going to receive a lot of information. I'm going to go over exactly what you're going to receive right at the end. Okay. So how are attorney costs determined and what are they on average? It depends. Um, this is a really tricky question because yeah. if you say a number, people come with that number in the head. So it depends on the amount of jobs to be done. If it's just a cash deal, um, it's, it's obviously less, but if it's a promise of sale or pre-construction or financing, then it involves a lot more work. So it's a little bit more, um, let's I give would, a ballpark. Of um, so I guess, um, between one and 1. 1.5%. Okay. Yeah. So between one and 1. 1.5. Exactly. Yep. You can That's work. You, yeah. You can work within those numbers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Uh, okay. Yeah. We had some more questions about that. So, um, can properties be purchased by foreign Holding company. Yes, yes. So there are, you can either register your foreign company in the Dominican Republic. You have to do that first because how long need, does that take? Like two to three months. Okay. But also setting up a Dominican corporate corporation takes the same time, two to three months. Um, you need to get a tax ID for your foreign company here. But I always recommend yeah. the clients to speak to the financial advisor first to see if it makes sense for them to open a branch of their company here or just to set up a Dominican company because it might be different from a, for us and for someone in the US or Canada. Yeah. But yes, you can do it. It takes a couple more time, but yes. So someone who's looking to purchase with a foreign holding company exactly. should get that process started now. There's no restrictions. Just like yeah. there are no restrictions for foreigners to purchase here, a foreign company is the yeah. same. The taxes that they have to pay here are the same, whether it's Dominican or foreign. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Um, let's head over to, uh, so we got the typical legal fees, the difference between ownership in your personal name versus a company. So that's, that's definitely, second podcast. yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, we are going to, we are going to do that, but let's, let's give them a brief overview. Okay. So ups and downs. First ups, it's good for inheritance process because the title is going to be in, in a corporation. You're yes, talking about. Yeah. the corporation is going to be in the name of your company. So one of the shareholders passes away, the title remains in the name of the company. You don't, you have to do an estate process, but it's not so complicated because the title is not changing. Yes. And I think people need to know that the inheritance process here in the Dominican Republic is very different from the inheritance process in any other foreign country. Oh, yeah, yes. I guess I would guess that would be another podcast yep, as yep. well that's for, me, <laughs> for me to compare. Yes. yes. So that's a good thing because the title remains there. 
And also for liability reasons, because your personal assets are going to be separated from anything that the company owns. So those are like the main two good reasons. The downside is that it's a little more expensive because there's a tax exemption that you don't get if you have it in a company's name. And every year you have to do the maintenance of your company and do tax declaration. Yeah, so there's there's some tax, there's some tax implications, and there's some differences in the amount of property taxes that you pay as yes. a corporation versus yes. a person. Exactly. So now what are the pros if you buy it in your own name? Well, there's a tax exemption in the Dominican Republic. This yeah. is this gets readjusted every year. So right now it's nine something less than ten million between nine and ten million pesos. About one hundred and seventy thousand. Yeah, tell me dollars. dollars exactly. Yeah, so somewhere around there. You pay one percent over that amount, which if you have it in a company's name, that exception doesn't apply. Yeah. So that's a good thing if you have it in your. It's it's cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's cheaper to have it in your cheaper. company name. However, if say you have a group of people though who are going to invest together, yeah, I don't it is a lot me. easier to be together in a corporation yes, and have yes. people move in and out of the corporation, yes, especially the corporate if they changes, die. Or yeah, the corporate like changes are easier. Or just if yeah. you want to transfer shares and stuff, it's easier than getting a title block. So if you have four people in a, in a title, individuals, and one of them passes away, the title is immediately blocked. Like you cannot sell until you've it is immediately done that blocked, probate yeah. process. And how long does probate usually last here? Oh my God. <laughs> On average, one to two years, one to two years. It's never going to be less than one year. Okay. So there you go. So you have a title blocked for that amount of time. Yeah. Um, so can we buy land in trusts and how does a trust work in the deal? No, no. Um, here, let me be like very specific on that trust in the Dominican Republic exists, but not is it's in the U S not the so same. So the attributions that they have are not the same in the Dominican Republic, either an individual or or a company can own company can own um, real estate properties. We are we are starting with trust, but it's not for everyone. So the process just to get a trust incorporated, we're still not there. We're working. There. We're working towards it. Okay, we're working. All right. So we'll have to keep you posted exactly. when 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 working with a trust makes sense. Exactly. All right. Is there title insurance here? There are some companies that provide title insurance. They're private companies. They're not government companies. But okay. it's not. It's not a. It's not a big deal here. Yeah, it's, it's not. not a it's thing. not it's a not thing popular. here. It's not. It's. It's not the same it's as, not, as the United States. You your attorney. That's your title insurance. Your there you go. The due diligence done by your attorney. <laughs> I'm your title insurance. There you go. And are titles available in English? You can get a translation from a legal interpreter like myself, yeah. but they're not in, they're issued in Spanish. Spanish is the official language of the Dominican Republic. Yeah. But you can get a translation just so you know what's in there. Great. Oh, I want to say something. Which oh, this is oh, funny. No. Um, people always ask me, is the address on the title? I'm like, no. Our no. registry system is not like that. Our registry system is with parcel numbers, but you're never going to see an address. An there. address on, yes. the, on the title. Yeah. That's what the, you know, the, the title number is what designates the, you know, where, where the parcel is located. Yes. Yeah. But a lot of people always ask me that. I'm like, yeah. what's the address here? No. <laughs> um, so what, so again, okay. So we talked about due diligence for developers and it's the same. Um, no, 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 I don't have residency. Can I still buy property here in the Dominican Republic? Yes, yes you can. And even when you get your property, the residency process is even easier for you. Yep. So win-win. Absolutely yes. win-win. But yes, there's no restrictions for, for foreigners to invest here. Yeah. And at Guzman and Risa, you can take people seamlessly from real estate transaction to, to residency. residency yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Because your law firm encompasses many different areas yes. of law in the Dominican Republic. Yes. So we have a, an immigration state. department specifically for that. Yeah. Okay, great. So can we still buy a property if a title des Linde is not currently in place or actualized? Yes. Um, I said before that we have to figure out what the structure is going to be, the closing structure. So what we would do in that case, do a down payment, wait for the des Linde to be done, and then start paying as the des Linde goes on or just at the end, once the des Linde is finished. But it is a requirement to transfer the title. So it would be like a provisional contract now. And then the final one when the thing that has been completed for transfer purposes. Okay. So it is possible. There to are do ways it. around it. There, yes. Yeah. Okay. And, but you want to make sure. We have to be in agreement that this is how we're going to do it. Okay. So there has to be full, full disclosure. And, yes, of course. and you absolutely want to make sure that you have a lawyer taking care of that document because that document is even more important. Exactly. Yeah. If it's you're even, choosing yeah, it's even more complicated when there's a property that is not this lended. Yeah. Okay. So na na na, we've answered that one already. Um title for pre-construction. How do condo associations work in the DR? That question's from Damien. Okay, so Damien, condo associations, um, once a condominium is built, there is an association by default. So all the owners form an association. Every year there has to be a condominium, an AGM, an annual assembly, where you have to present, where you have to designate an administrator. And then this administrator has to present like the income and expenses from the last year, the budget for the next year, and like a list of 
if there are any people who owe money because you might take, need to take legal action against them. So every year there has to be an AGM. And that's basically how it works. The condo association meets at least once a year and there can be any extraordinary meetings during the year to address any other yeah. um, topics that come up. Yeah. And you generally request if there's a condominium to see the, the, the bylaws, the bylaws. Yes. Yeah. The bylaws so that you understand what you're getting into exactly. by jumping into this condo, because you're not just buying, you're not just buying a, you know a, a condo, you're buying the law, the rules Actually, and regulation. I remember right? some other story. Um, people will come and sell and say, oh yeah, it's pet friendly. You can have your dogs. And then you know what? Some, some condominiums don't allow pets. No, they don't. And you already purchased, but you know what? You didn't do that part of the due diligence also. And then what happens? So everybody's against you at the AGM. You're not supposed to have dogs. What are you going to do now? Yeah. Fluffy's and not going anywhere. So. Exactly. And changing the files, <laughs> that's complicated. Yes. Yeah. So make sure that, that you ask, like, if you're dog friendly, you have a pet, make sure that a condominium, if you're buying, um, that it allows pets. Yeah. Okay, I've got a good one over here in the chat. So okay. once you have title for the land only, mm -hmm. and then you go and you build a house, mm -hmm. obviously it's all permitted and everything. Yes. So once the house is completed, do you need to register the new house structure? Yes, you have to register your improvement. Okay. Your taxes are going to go up, but you have to. Because then yeah. um, if you sell afterwards, or even if the tax department just, I don't know, for whatever reason is doing a reassessment in the in that area where your property is, and they see that there's an improvement there and you haven't registered it, they can ask for taxes, even for three years, like back taxes, even if you've had it for one year. So avoid that. Once you have it built, register your improvement. Okay, great. Great advice. Um, so, and also just so that you're up to date with all your taxes and yeah. everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let's see. Um, oh my goodness. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, can you get a power of attorney if I have never visited the Dominican Republic before? Yes, you can get a power of attorney if yeah. you're in the US or in Canada. I don't know if there are people from other places. I'm just referring to those two. But yes, you have to do it before a notary in your country. Like we will send you the information by email, the template for the power of attorney. You need to go before your notary public there and then get it apostille. So apostille is a registry, a legalization process for documents that are going yeah. to be used in a foreign country. So in the U.S., for example, the, the competent authority to issue the apostille is the Department of the State Department of State. Okay, so from each state, um, whoever is the Secretary of State of that state has to issue the apostille. And in Canada is the minute I don't know it's in French. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yes, it's also a process that started earlier this year. Thank God, because yep. before you had to do it through the Dominican Council, you don't have to do that anymore. But yes, there are ways around the power of attorney. We would send you the information on how to do it. Great. Go to Republic apostille, and you send it here through FedEx, DHL, UPS. Do not use any public mail service. No, do not you use any public it. mail service. It will never arrive. No. And something that everyone should know here about signing contracts in this country, you must use blue ink. Oh, <laughs> it's a little detail, but a very important one. Yes, yes, yes. it is true. People tell me black, I'm like, no, no, blue. always has to be blue. <laughs> All right. So can a sale be in US dollars for the seller and the buyer to avoid any exchange rates? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. U.S., Canadian, Euros, whatever the parties decide. Yeah, whatever it's been negotiated in and whatever works to move through the escrow account. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, if I'm not in the country and the agent has POA, how do I get my keys? So I think I'll, ta I'll, I'll take that okay. one. I would definitely say that you want to keep the keys to your unit here in the country. Um, it would be fine. Ask your agent, your realtor. We do a lot of extra special things for our clients. And if you need to have a set of keys FedEx to you, then we would FedEx you a set of keys mm -hmm. and we would make an extra copy because you always want to be able for someone to get in and have access to your property, for example, in case there's a flood or something needs to be taken yeah. care of, you always want to make sure that there are there are a set of keys here on the island. And then we as your realtors would be happy to make, go and get you a set of keys and, and FedEx it out to you. Um, let's see. Are there any tax incentives for foreigners buying property in the DR? Um, I'm not sure if Joe's referring to back home tax. Uh, things. And that's that's something that's individual to every country. Um, but are, are there... Are, or could we maybe talk about confiture for a second? Um, I can, yeah, we can talk about confiture. Yeah, we can go briefly over this. Because people think that's... Okay, so for confiture, <laughs> there's a lot of tax... Look, there are two basic tax exemptions for projects that are under confiture. So this does not apply to all properties. No. But if you buy in a place that's under confiture, the first purchaser doesn't have to pay the transfer tax, which is 3% of the value. And then they don't have to pay annual property tax, either for 10 or 15 years. It depends what the confiture um, approval 
So yeah. this is the resolution, but this is not for everyone. Okay. This is just for the projects that have comfort. And your realtor is going to let you know if you're looking at a property with comfort. Yeah, a lot we'll of the properties here are, are working with comfort tour because it's an yeah. incentive for people to. Absolutely. To, absolutely. To invest. And those are generally going to be found on your pre-construction projects. Yes. Yeah. It's not going to be done on, on something that's finished unless no. the mm. developer was unable to sell uh, during the pre-construction phase. That was left there, but no, everything's. Yeah. <laughs> Usually they go. Everything's going fast. So people. <laughs> All right. So question, is Sisua or Cabarete better to invest in? Um, I would say, I'll, yeah, I'll flag that one. So it depends. It does depend. Um, so Sisua and Cabarete have different landscapes as far as the amount of, simply the amount of physical land that's available. There's much more yes. physical land and more properties available in Sisua than there is in Cabarete. So because of that, Cabarete properties in Cabarete real estate tend to be a little bit on higher than some of the Sisua properties. It doesn't mean to say that the Sisua properties aren't at the same level, but overall, on average, most properties in Cabarete are a little bit more money to get into than it is in Sisua. However, both sides, both doesn't matter which community that you jump into at this point, as long as you hang on to your property long enough and you make some capital improvements in it, you are going to be safe and have a great investment. Plus it's a 10 to 15 minute difference. So yeah, it's a 10 minute drive between the two. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how do you counter offer a price increase on pre-construction? So how often does that happen when we, someone gets into a contract and because I do believe that happened based on what happened during the pandemic oh, and some, okay, no, some pre-construction properties inside of their contract of sale or their promise of sale yeah. come with a clause. Yes. Right? Well, what we're normally putting is it's hard for construction materials to go over like 10%. Like that's a big increase. So what we do is we include a clause that up to 10%, the developer is going to um, kind of cover that cost, but anything over you have to negotiate because if it's too much of a loss, then it doesn't make sense for, yeah. for the developer either. But yeah. yeah, we include contracts to protect the clients in that case as well. Okay. So again. And also like if there's um, a difference in the dollar in inflation, we also put um, some clauses to, to protect the buyer as well. Okay. There you go. Uh, let's see if you're anticipating applying for financing, absolutely. You want to start the process for financing before you arrive. Absolutely. Can answer that yes, one. <laughs> absolutely. I will flag that one. Uh, inside of Realtor DR, we now have a mortgage specialist. So we would be excited to receive you and have you come in and connect you with, uh, with Cesar who works in our office to get you pre-approved before you arrive, because otherwise there's really no point in us going out looking at properties if we don't know what we're working with. And financing is a little bit different here in this country. Um, I won't get into too many of the details, but you know, it's it's not really possible to get into a property with 5% here, for example. Oh, no. You need a minimum of 30% of the bank appraised value of the property. So you want to be looking at properties that you can comfortably provide 30 to 40% of the purchase price upfront. And then we can get into financing. Yeah, and at it's another good that day. you have that mortgage specialist there because then they have they know which documents they have to bring. They're here. Exactly. They have to go back to get that. Yeah. No, just come prepared with everything. Yeah, and you can start the process. Absolutely, please start it before you come, <laughs> so that we can best use our time together while you're here to be looking at the right properties for you. Um, if you're granted residency, mm -hmm. what are additional benefits to residency? Well, uh, everything that has to do with immigration is handled yeah. by my office in Santo Domingo. Yeah. So I kind of just refer everything to them so that they are able to give you more but there's no, there's no real benefit to having your residency when purchasing. Oh, no. No, no that's None no difference. All. But it's if you're going to be here six months of the year, it's better just it for you to be well. legal, just your immigration status, just to be legal, the same as you would be in any other country. Exactly. But if you want like a specific, specific, uh, specific information, you yeah. can kind of... Um, Send me an email and I'll refer you to my office in Santo Domingo. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, is it true that people who are over 65 year old, 65 years old are exempt from property taxes? Okay. But let me tell you this something. Is, this is not that simple. Uh, yes. It's over <laughs> 65. If that's your only property, you can't have two more properties, then it doesn't apply. Only one. And it's not automatic. So you have to go through a process to get a certification that says that you don't have to pay any annual taxes. Okay. Yeah. Because people sometimes think that, okay, I'm over 65. No, no, no. It's not an automatic thing because the tax department is not going to come after you. You have to come after them. Yes. And so mm -hmm. it's a, it's a thing where you're going to want to hire Annabelle to file all the appropriate yes. paperwork if you want to access that, yes. <laughs> that benefit. Right. Um, let's see, expand on seller financing. Do people buy and sell mortgage notes like they do in the United States? My thought is buying a property seller financed and then working with the seller when they want to cash out to sell their note to a note investor. 
What's a note investor? <laughs> I am not entirely I'm certain not, because I we don't really have that. However, we do do seller financing. Yes. It often happens. Yes. And then, you know, that's, there, there's a lot of specifics that are involved yes, with seller financing. The same but, as, as if it was for a bank, like all the conditions and terms are set out up front. You can pay off at any time. You can make balloon payments. Yes. All that. But I don't think that the, in, in, that I'm aware of in this country that there's such a thing as a note investor. I don't, so those I, are people, I don't know. The those are people who are buying up liens and other properties. Oh, well, no, yeah. I don't. I'm yeah. not familiar with that concept either. Sorry about We're that. We're going to table that one and see, Damien, yes. if we can't find the answer to that question a little bit later. Um, do we have good property management companies in the North Coast oh, and cool. what are the prices? So absolutely. I'll grab this one. Yes. So we have, there are many, many great property management companies here on the North Coast. The majority of people who purchase investment properties here, even if it's their, if it's their own dream vacation property, they want it to cover costs while they're not here. And because they might not be here, you know, maybe a, yeah, it's an investment like a, property, they need someone to take They're only care. here two, maybe four weeks maximum of the year are a number of great companies that can help take care of your property. So you're going to have to do a little bit of interviewing while you're here after you've bought your property. You can even do the interviewing ahead of time. Uh, but generally, property management will structure with either a flat fee at the beginning plus a percentage of your rentals, mm -hmm. or they will go with a higher percentage and only that, only whatever you're renting out, they'll take a percentage of 20 to 30% versus say maybe 10 to 15 with a flat fee. So again, it's going to vary from company to company. You're going to want to check them out and also your needs for the company. Yes. You know, so if you need someone to find you renters, that's going to be a different company than say one that's just going to take care of your property while you're not here and pay exactly. your bills. It's yeah. going to depend on what you want. Yeah, yes. exactly. But yes, because property investment for rentals is a big deal here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bunch. Of okay. So for Annabelle, what can you tell us about the law in the Dominican Republic for retirees with an income of $5,000? But what's regarding what specifically? Yeah. Say that just regarding like if you residents? can elaborate on that. That would be great. Okay, because that would be. Yeah. Are there any benefits for veterans buying in the Dominican Republic? No. <laughs> no, there's no special no. status no, for veterans. Exactly. Here. You are a veteran in your country. And and although everyone appreciates yes. your your service, sadly, there's no benefits here financially for you. Okay. Uh, let's see. We've got here. Um We've got Roosevelt here. So a note investor. Oh, thank you for defining a note investor for us. They, they buy real estate debt. Yes. So that's what I, what I assume. I, I, I answered oh, correctly. Okay. Yes. They purchase yeah, that's real not, estate debt. Oh, okay. Okay. It could happen like uh, occasionally, but it's not, it's not a thing here. Yeah. So Cesar was talking about tax exemption. He was saying. Oh, that's tax exemption. Um, that's more of a question for an accountant, like our fiscal part, which we also have in the office. And if needed, I can just set up a, a meeting for that specifically to talk about any incentives for any type of yes. people. Yeah. Um, so have a special condition. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So there's a lot of things here that are going to require your own specific conversation with, with a lawyer. So Pedro is asking, can you speak about investment properties and rental market demand? For example, if you, you know, the, if you make a purchase for the purpose of renting, that's Pedro, what, I, that's what everybody does. I know. So Pedro, I love to answer this question. So we at Realtor DR have an amazing system where we can create for you what's called an investor summary on any property that you're looking at. What we do is we, we make an estimate of, of what your property could potentially rent for. Generally, properties here on the North Coast average approximately 60% of occupancy. So we use that as the rate. But then we create an entire profile for you of this property based on that occupancy, what we think it will rent for in high and in low season. It's going to show you all the money you're going to need to get into that property, including transfer tax and legal fees mm -hmm. and all of the things. So we're very, very, very proud of, of that uh, tool that we have. Thank you to our they wonderful team. for you. They do the job for you. So we will make sure that if investment and, and rental and income is your priority, that we get you into the right property that's going to help with the numbers and make sure that you are on the right side of that investment. Perfect. Yeah. So let's see, what is the scope of coverage surrounding insurance uh, and development? If there's hurricane coverage, you can obtain. So- Okay, I can tell from two perspectives. Yeah. One, here the only only condominiums are obligated by law to have insurance. And that go. includes um liability, 
and like the normally the equipment like the generator and then reconstruction value for tornadoes hurricanes or that anything that's inside your apartment you have to get an additional insurance, uh, insurance policy and then for houses then you have to talk to an insurance um agent for that yes so and, but insurance what, is offered yeah kind of what you want to what you want to be to, what do you, how do you say this? Um, what you want to include in your policy? Yes. Yeah. So you can include whatever you want. Yeah. So it can be like liability. If you're going to be renting, then you definitely want liability. But if not, you just want to protect like your home and the contents inside, then it's a different policy. Yeah. And historically, we are not felled by hurricanes here. We do have them. They do pass by. Uh, however, so we so. have not had any catastrophic hits to the North Coast in, um, I think, well, not in my time here, which is 25 years. But I do believe there's historical, like yeah, over 100 1998 years. 1998 was like a big one. And but not even, but not even here. Not yes. even like in the North Coast. But yeah. So generally, as hurricanes come by, we are blessed with some of the largest mountain ranges in the Caribbean. And us, they yes. statistically push storms, just that couple nudge of degrees, latitude difference. And we are generally never hit with an eye of a storm here on the North coast. Um, so you're generally pretty safe for that if you're purchasing here. So do we handle other areas like Punta Cana? We do. Absolutely. Yes. We do. We do as well. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, there is, there's a law office. There's a yes, we have office, an office there. there. They're yeah. not, we have yeah. Punta Cana in Casa de Campo, La Romana on that side of the island. Exactly. Yes. So we don't necessarily have offices in Punta Cana. However, we are well-versed in many different pre-construction developments in Punta Cana. And that's more where we specialize in Punta Cana at the moment as Realtor DR. However, it is a growing, booming uh, place there down in Punta Cana and so yay, Punta Cana, <laughs> and and we can absolutely help you find a property down there if that's your wish. Okay. Uh, so yes. So let, let me tell you a little bit about what you're going to be getting tomorrow. So for registering for this webinar tomorrow, you're going to receive an email with the email that you registered for tonight, you're going to receive the replay. So you'll be able to watch this again. You're going to receive my slides that we created for the webinar. Beautiful. <laughs> You're going to receive a link to Guzman Ariza. They have created an entire book that you can download or access online. Yes. Once you, it, once you, yeah, it's a legal guide to investing yes. in the Dominican Republic. So you'll find information on real estate, taxes, companies. It's comprehensive. It goes into yeah. great Even detail law. Yep. Yeah, of some of the stuff we talked yeah. about. Yeah. Um, we're also going to send you our DR buying guide from our website that you can look at, which ex helps to explain things a little bit more, uh, just, just a little bit more straightforward and simple. Um, and the, the, you know, the more in-depth version will be the one that comes from Guzman Ariza. And then you're going to get a link to book a call with me and my, my information. And we're also going to give you all of Annabelle's contact information, her email so that you can book some time with her. If you have more specific questions and, or would like to hire her. Sure. Yeah. Can help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And also we're open for any feedback. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, someone's asking my six, four, seven number still available. Absolutely. That is my CRM generated number. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if so, if you have that, I will absolutely get your texts or your phone calls. Um, the average homeowner's fee. So Laura is asking that generally, Laura, it's going to depend on the development. Yes. Um, and it's going to depend on whether or not you're in a condominium or if you're in a home. So I would say generally, I mean, these days with pre-construction, they're telling most people that the HOA fees will be between two and $3 yeah, was per gonna meter. That. Yeah. It tends to be where, where they're, where they're heading. And then, you know, different, different places that are already established have different fees based on the services that they will provide. Yes, I was going to say that like some include electricity, yes, but some, some don't. Do know. So that's a major difference there. Yeah. Yeah. So you always want to ask. And again, as you can always ask your realtor that whenever you're looking at a property, yeah, that's also something know. you should add, you should ask before. So, yeah. you know, when you crunch the numbers, you make sure that this is a good investment for you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So can you purchase a property with crypto <laughs> there? If you have a seller and a buyer who both have crypto and are willing to do it, you can, can you not? I haven't done any, but I've had, I have heard of people who have done yes. still for transfer purposes, you have to put a number like an actual figure yes. for transfer purposes and for tax purposes. But the sell, the, then um, the the transfer of the crypto, however you do it, is between yeah, so buyer and seller so, directly. So it is possible. Yeah. But yeah. You, yeah, but you need to say for transfer purposes and for the tax yes. department, you need to state yeah. a number there. Yeah, so there will be Whatever's an offer. Whatever's the equivalent. There'll be an offer to purchase in US dollars. Exactly. And then you can you can do the, the crypto exchange between yes. the two of you based on that amount. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. of course, that doesn't come um, into Dominican Republic law still. But yes, we're we're working towards that as well. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, okay, great. So we're, uh, someone's asked, can you finance land? I do believe so. Yeah. But, but uh, what does that mean? So I'm, I'm guessing that someone is asking like if they financing. can get, get either seller, well, seller finance, absolutely. You or, can get, or, or bank, bank financing. financing. Yes. Is there a descended property? You have to go through a process with the bank and the bank is going to decide yes or not, but you can finance land as well. Yeah. Okay. So we have someone who says here, I just sent a 5k deposit for pre-construction. Oh, and they want to call you tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> so Jason, absolutely. <laughs> Michelle is going to send you. Yes. Uh, Jason, I'm going to send you all of Annabelle's information. So no worries. You can reach out and contact her tomorrow. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do we work in Las Serenas? We have an office in Las Terrenas as well. The, yeah. Um, yeah. So Guzman Arisa has 10 offices all around the Dominican Republic, specifically where foreigners are. So yes, we have one in Las Terrenas as well, and I can refer you to them there. And in Samana, which yeah. is kind of close. Yeah. And we at Realtor DR, we have a trusted realtor that we work with over in Las Terrenas, and we do have some listings over there as yeah. well. So we can both help service you awesome. in Las Terrenas. And okay. if we have to go there, we'll go there as well. <laughs> yeah, we'll okay. make it work. We'll make it work. <laughs> Absolutely, we will. Um, what does it take to get documents in English? Stephen's asking. You just need a translator. You just need to translate and ask. These there's usually like, like if a it's small a contract, cost. The POA, um, it's normally included in our yes. piece. Like the POA and the contract is included because if English is your language, we want to make sure that you understand what you're selling amongst yeah. Ariel, what you're buying, what you're signing. So yes. All right. No, no, no. Okay. Do we have any other hot questions Ooh, in here? Active. I know, yeah. I know we do. We've got great. Um, I don't know the exact number of tourists on the North coast. I know that the country is aiming yeah. to have more than 10 million tourists yes. this year. Yes. During the first um, six months. And then it, it's like every quarter they, they tell us how much, but yeah, yeah we're aiming to have. Yeah. Um, by the end of the year, but yeah, in the North coast only now, we don't know. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then Damien, uh, I'm happy to have that conversation. If if you're a realtor out in the United States or in Canada um, and you'd like to bring some buyers here and you'd like to work with me or anyone else inside of the Realtor DR office, that would be great. Let's have a conversation. Absolutely. And we'll make it happen. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else do we what have? Do we have anything good. else here in the chat? I'm trying to look. Um, yep. We're going to be sharing all the information. Okay. Oh, here's an interesting one. A client of mine purchased a okay. lot in Cabarete. Okay. It turns out the land is protected under the mangrove law. So they are unable to build. Yeah. Are there any exceptions for this? So it's what, what should that person have okay. done? Before exactly. They I was going to say that, <laughs> That's what what I say that. because yeah. I have a case just like that now. So this guy purchased, but I, we sent a surveyor first. So the surveyor gave me back a report and told me like, this is in protected area. So this is green area. You can't build. And the guy's like, okay, I still want it because I have access to the lagoon. Okay, perfect. Okay. So that is part of the due diligence. You have to do it before. If you make a huge investment and then... Yes. I mean, you already purchased. What are you going to do for this? Now, you can go to the Ministry of Environment to see what type of exceptions they will make there. There are some constructions that can be done and some business that you can install, but that, that you have to deal directly with them to see what is allowed and what is not allowed. Yeah. Um, so does a Dominican uh, real estate contract contain a clause penalizing the developer for failing to deliver on time? Yes, of course. Absolutely, it does. Yeah. There's Absolutely. a penalty for each day of delays, basically when it's pre-construction. And yes, and at the end, you can either deduct it from the last payment that you have to do. So it's easier for you. You don't got to have to go after them and chase them for that And money. again, you want to make sure you're working with your realtor and your lawyer before you're signing those contracts because a developer may not put that clause in. Of course not. Yeah. <laughs> and then your exactly. contract, the contract is a law between the parties. Yes. So whatever is stated in the contract, that's, that's what's, what's going to happen. You. Yeah. So definitely pre-construction, work with your realtor, work yeah. with your lawyer. If it's not there, then you have to go through a court case and that gets more complicated. Yeah. We try to prevent all that. That's Absolutely. what we do. Um, so here's a question from Luis. I'm being asked to deposit 5K to hold a pre-construction project in Punta Cana. At what point would I get an attorney involved to review the incoming sale documents? So Luis, I would say immediately. Exactly. Yeah. So generally what happens in most pre-construction projects is that the, the 5k is to, is to reserve the unit, to block it for you. And then you normally have 30 days in which to provide either whatever it is, 15, 20% of the total purchase price to, to get into the promise of sale yeah. card. And it's inside of that 30 days that you get to find an attorney and have them receive all of the contracts from the developer and make sure that you are protected. Yeah, the same answer right yeah. away. Right, right away. As soon as you hand over that 5K immediately, even if before. not, even before, <laughs> even before okay? Yeah. 
Again, it can, you can always consult with a lawyer before you invest in a pre-construction property yes. to make sure that they have complied with everything that they're supposed to before they begin construction and sales. Yeah. Oh, hey, Jimmy, how's it going? So you've heard that owning a home here is different from the US where you may own your home outright, but you pay taxes on the land forever. And if you don't pay your home, you could lose your home. Is the DR different? So uh, Jimmy, I'm, I'm guessing if you're referring to that, if you don't pay uh, your taxes, could someone lose their property? I'm going to guess that's what he's asking. Yeah, the tax department can put a lien on your property. They can put a lien it's on it. It's not common, but it can happen. And then it's just, if you want to sell or you have to go through an estate process, you have to clear that lien before you're able to go yeah. forward. So, but they won't be taking away your home or your, or no. your condo, but you will be unable to sell until exactly. you, until you square things up. Yeah, and you government. don't want them adding up because then there's like late fees on late fees and interest. So yeah, yeah. Don't go there. Don't go that road. Pay your yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so Damien, I think I'm not going to get into infrastructure inside the company, inside of this webinar. I see your question. Um, but I think we'll save that for a different conversation. Um, if a client um, kind of doesn't want to use equity within their home funds of purchase, are the banks? Okay, so banks will offer some financing. There are some now, only in the last few years, uh, there are some foreign-based foreign, foreign based financing options. They do not look the same like they do back in the United States or Canada. Again, we have a dedicated mortgage specialist inside of Realtor DR who can take care of all of those questions for you. So Trevor, I'm happy to connect you with Cesar um, okay. so that you can answer all of your financing questions. But generally, you need 30% down. They will finance up to 70% of a property. They will amortize for 25 years, but the best rate they're going to offer you at a five-year is 9% currently. So, but again, that's a better conversation to have with Cesar in our office and I'm happy to connect you. Uh, are HOA fees worth paying in the DR? Well, you get to, because you if you to, join, you have to you, pay them. If you're in a condominium, <laughs> yes, because otherwise they can put a lien on the property and they can foreclose the property. They can even go further and take the property from you. That can happen. Yes. So, so your yes. HOA fees are more, even more powerful than your taxes. Yes. <laughs> it's a big deal. And again, you know, you're- Because you're, it moves quickly still. And your association depends on you. You know, that it functions because yeah. everyone is paying for the generator, that everyone's paying for the security. Um, and if you've got a dispute with that, then you need to get a lawyer. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay. So obtaining builders and workers to build a land lot again, uh, to hear that's going to be a question that you and I can tackle together. Um, the North coast, you know, the North coast is, is a very special part of the Dominican Republic. Oh, it's in my heart. <laughs> it is absolutely. You know, it is incredibly diverse environmentally. Yeah. You know, we've got incredible mountainous areas. We've got beautiful beaches. Yeah. We are on the Atlantic versus on the Caribbean Sea, which gives us our wind and our waves. Yes. We have world-class wind and waves for kite surfing, windsurfing, actual surfing. Um, and it's, it's. I would say- I think it's more like family-oriented, more yeah. friendly. Yes, yes, we have definitely. really great, very strong communities here. Yes. And especially in Susu Cabarete, there is a great mix between immigrants and Dominicans yeah, that I make it- I feel like you would eat. find your little crew here. Yeah, you'll be- right in place here. Yeah. You'll, you'll find your people. Exactly. Because I feel like, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Capital gains have been a topic that intimidates sellers. Are there options that could make this process more flexible? That's a question for another moment as well, because we have to see each case individually. Yeah. So it's kind of, it, it depends what the fiscal value is, how much you're selling for. Let's calculate capital gains. There are ways around it, how we can do it. So yes, there yeah. are ways around it, but we have to analyze these, each case specifically yeah. to see what what's convenient. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Uh, we've got how easy is it to open a bank account and do payments, purchases, et cetera, through the bank, maybe even a loan. So we talked, uh, John, I talked a little bit about financing that that's that's a separate question, but it's very easy for foreigners to open bank accounts here. You can there, answer that one. <laughs> yeah, there there we have we have a list of requisites that you'll need to provide. Uh, it's easily it's easily done. You do have to create, you know, there are some documents that you need to bring with you and there's a certain amount of cash that you need as a as a uh, you know, minimum deposit for a U.S. account or a peso account, but your realtor can help you with that because we well. mm -hmm. we do all those things for you. Um, okay. Uh, yes, there are. Okay, Jose, very good point. Yes, there are VA uh, clinics and associations here, and there is medical oh, yes. things for veterans here on the North Coast. You just know tax incentives. Yes, yeah, legally. 
So yes, absolutely. And we do and have a very, well, I think they're opening one in Cabarete. So yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. There's, there's a You're strong VA presence here in yes. the Dominican Republic. So, uh, have they broken ground and ply Bergantine? So that's where the Vin Diesel thing is happening. Um, and if so, uh, prices, are they expected to go up next year substantially? I'd say that's going to happen, uh, over time. Yes. I think the project is going to take over in Playa Bergantine, probably four to six years to complete. It's gonna, yeah. It's going to yep. take a while. It's going to take some time. Um, and they're starting, they are going to do the movie stu studio, but there's a whole separate development from, the movie studio, there are two large Hyatt resorts that are going to be opening in Playa Bergantine. And then there's an entire, you know, pre-construction real estate program that's also going to be happening in that area. And those all things we can expect to see in the next in the probably movie. four to six to eight years. Yeah, we're going to be there. Yes. Checking and out. <laughs> as those things come to fruition and as more people get excited about them and as they get closer to opening, absolutely prices for things demand to be on the North coast will go up. Of course. But this okay. is your time to invest. <laughs> it is. You want to get in now. Yes. Absolutely. All right. So is there a website that Realtor DR has where all of these listings are in one place? Absolutely. Darcy, great question. You can go to realtordr.com. Uh, our website has been just recently updated and it's super easy to navigate. Feel free to hop over there and you can see all of the listings. We have well over 350 listings currently right now. And there is no bars to us, you know, co-broking with any other agent with any other listing here on the North Coast to help you. All right. Team, it is 9-11 already. Oh what God. a fantastic hour and 10 I minutes know, we had. I, yes. It has gone by like this. Uh, I want to take a moment to thank you, Annabelle, for joining us. Thank you for having me here. We got so much I hope to have been able to clarify a lot of things, <laughs> answer, make sure that, yes, you can invest. It's safer to invest, but you need your real attorney. And you, you need your lawyer. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm so excited. Brian, you're so welcome. Uh, we look forward to you all coming and seeing us very soon. Yes. We are waiting for you with open arms to come here on the North Coast, come and invest, do it safely, and we can't wait for you to be a part of our community. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great, great night.